Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yeah! Wow. Yeah. We're here. We're here where it all started for America. Yeah, we are. Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock. Look, man. Some people say we didn't land on it, it landed on us. Goddamn right. You know who said that? No. Malcolm X. Well. Malcolm X did that. Good for him. We, uh... Look, we spend our own money on this show. We travel a lot. Mm-hmm. We thought well, we would take it back to where it all began. Plymouth Rock on Thanksgiving Day. People, ha- people have this idea about what Thanksgiving is and how it got started, and yeah. it's just revisionist history. We're yeah. going to tell you the real story today. Yeah, yeah I mean, it is and it isn't. Um, the, the rock itself was... Uh, uh, can you get a shot of that rock, Alec, the Plymouth Rock itself? There it is. A lot smaller in real life. Uh, also, this is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Of children. Of uh, children. Yeah. Who are actually far enough away that they can't hear this. But that's, these are the Plymouth people. You know, They're, these are the rock people. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that uh, there's still children being born on Plymouth Rock today. Oh, yeah. Do you think they, they're called Plymouthians? Uh, I believe it's just Europeans. Mm. <laughs> Where is Plymouth Rock, by the way? I have no idea. Massachusetts. Yeah, it is. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. I feel pretty confident about all this. Uh, it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> this is the day that everybody joined hands, fingers intertwined, shared a nice meal together. Indians and white men. And uh, we said thanks. What are we thankful for? Well, we were thankful because we were going to steal their whole goddamn country. Yeah, they didn't know that at the time, I don't think. <laughs> because they had no concept of land ownership or any of that shit. No, no. Uh, so, yeah, we, we may have fucked them over a little bit. But the point is, we're here to give thanks. We are. For this beautiful country that we stole. Um, yep. And, hey, it's doing great. It's doing great, man. I, I, well, I think we made it great again. Um, I think there was a while where it wasn't yeah. great. But I think it's great again right now. So I heard an interesting theory on the internet today about how Thanksgiving actually started. Really? Yeah, you want to hear this? Fire away. So what happened was we were invaded Uh by giant turkeys, like Tyrannosaurus Rex. Style turkeys? Yeah, like huge turkeys. And we came together with the natives and defeated the turkeys. And now once a year, we slaughter one of their children to celebrate the victory. I like that. It's a lot more badass than eating corn with a bunch of fucking native people. Yeah, so. no, I'm a uh, look. I, I love corn. Um, can I t- can I be real with you? I, I love natives I, I and love, corn. I love natives corn, but I think the Mexicans did it the best for Thanksgiving. Just for corn in general. There's nothing I love more than Mexican corn. Where well, they put it in mayonnaise. And oh, that's gross. Bro. Paprika. No. Fry that shit up on the side of the streets. <laughs> And no. or underpasses. I'm a big fan of that. I mean, I like a good corn tortilla. I like yeah. a corn chip and salsa. I like uh-huh. that. Uh, uh-huh. Corn salsa is good as well. Big um, fan. I like whatever that is with the corn and the cheese is good, too. I'm not a fan of the man. I don't like mayonnaise. It's gross. You know, I can't even taste it the way it's, it's cooked oil, in. It's oil and egg whites, dude. What's the point of that? Well, I, It's I can't poor even, people food. I don't eat that shit. Once it's cooked in, I really can't tell what it is. Um, because uh, my mom and dad always told me there's nothing better than heated up mayonnaise. That's well, that's gross. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you this though. What I like is I like to go to the uh, the Minnesota State Fair mm-hmm. and get the corn that's like just slathered in butter and yeah. salt. Yeah. Jack Mandeville could tell you about that. Goddamn Actually, right me and Derek White and a couple of our buddies went to uh, the Minnesota State Fair one time and we played something called White Trash Bingo. Ah. Are you familiar with that? Is that just bingo, but for for poor white people? Yeah, yeah. So you just spot different things, like a a, a half ton family. So four or less family members who add up to a thousand pounds is one of them. All right, all right. I was th- I was thinking real bingo. I played real bingo once in L.A. I wanted to see what it was. The hype was about. You ever drive by those places on the highway and it just says bingo? But yeah, it's it says, weird. Yeah, yeah, but they've, they've got a they've got a big prize, right? It's like. Five grand or whatever it is. Jack Jack Mandeville and Crispy play that shit all the time in Wimberley, I, Texas. I went. It's really weird. I went, actually. Um, I went to play bingo at one of those giant-ass halls in uh, Inglewood, California. 
Inglewood's known for its bingo. They are? More than anything else that they're known for, I believe. You know what it's not known for? White people. Yeah. Me and uh, my lady at the time were the uh, only mm. whites in there, and they, people were not stoked. Yeah. They were not stoked. Well. I want, I, I want to go ahead and say this on the records. It was reverse racism. And they were like, hey, man, we're trying to win rent and shit like that. And you guys are getting fucked up drinking, you know. I feel like Ice that's, house. I feel, I, I understand that. I feel like that's when straight white girls go to gay bars and get super loud. Like, oh, we feel so comfortable here. Yeah. Like, so did we until you got here, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out of my place. God damn it. What other podcast has gone to, to Plymouth Rock for, uh, for a Thanksgiving Day special? I don't think anybody has. I don't think, I don't think one person I don't has. Think, I don't think we have. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> we have and we haven't. You know, Because uh, there's a lot of peers at Plymouth Rock, I believe. We're, we're definitely on a beach, and there is some rocks around. So we thought, hey, man, this could have been where it's at. Our, our cartographers back in the day are map makers. Yeah, they didn't know. They, didn't, they weren't they didn't what know. they were today. This could have been it. And I feel pretty confident in everything I'm doing today. Well, well, we one thing we did try to do is we tried to hire uh, ship replicas, mm-hmm. Nina, Penta, Santa Maria. Yes. To just float behind us. Uh, we were told that's not a thing. Uh, we were also told that uh, Columbus didn't invent Thanksgiving, so those ships were never there. No, he was dead by then. Yeah, he was long dead. Yeah. What was the Thanksgiving ship? The ship? Yeah, what, what do they call that? I don't remember there being a ship with Thanksgiving. That all the pilgrims were on. That, that was... I think it was Turk Force One. No, that was the Nina's... It's, oh, my God. Was it really? Pinta and Santa Maria. Yeah, but that wasn't Thanksgiving. That was before that. Yeah, but, but during Thanksgiving, they I felt like there was a ship that dropped off more white people. Look, there's always ships dropping off white people, <laughs> dude, <laughs> all over the world. <laughs> By the way, have you heard about the t- Titanic 2? It's going to take the same route as the original one? I did. I did. I won on it. No. I won on it. Uh, but I'm going to dress up as a little kid. So oh, in yeah, case yeah. it goes down, at least I'm getting off that fucking You can disidentify as a kid these days. Well, I, my inner child is uh, pretty much my outer child these days. So um, We're here. We're live at Plymouth Rock. Dan, what are you thankful for in this Thanksgiving? Next question. There's a lot of smoke coming at me. <laughs> oh, man. The tiki torches maybe have been a bad idea here. I'm thankful for these tiki torches, actually. <laughs> oh, God. For... Blowing smoke in your face. They are, they are coming hot at my face here. That's what we give you on Thanksgiving. Um, we actually broke these in half over our legs and put these on the beach. Yeah. I'd highly recommend flipping this on on YouTube. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of smoke coming at me. Oh, this could be my last Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, boy. Might have to uh, hike her on back, Alec. You know? Uh, our producer's looking at me. And he's like, bro, you were in the line of fire right there. I really am. I thought the white claw would have taken the sting out of the smoke, but it de- it definitely has not. I'm just in, right now. I'm thankful for this. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy watching you struggle. You know what I'm thankful for? Uh, all Matter of fact, I, every time you move, the smoke just follows you. It just keeps getting closer <laughs> to my face, dude. Um, I want to thank uh, all the women of Arizona State on the sports show. I said that they didn't deserve that college team they had, and then what did they do? Beat Oregon. It goddamn the right trap they 12. did. What a fucking joke that whole conference is. Oh, get the, fucked, Trap Twelve. I'm gonna go over the, the things that I'm more, I'm most thankful for in this life. Okay. Women who've, who've attended Arizona State University. That's one. That's numero uno in my books. If you haven't met one of those women, god damn it, you're missing out. Yeah, you should once in your life just dabble a little bit with someone, one woman who has gone to Arizona State yeah. University. Um. God, God bless you if you get a contortionist in that bunch. Can you imagine the gymnast there? Ooh. I can't. I can't. Uh, second thing I'm, I'm thankful for is that uh, Four Loco has made a seltzer. Yep. That is 14 proof. That will be out um, next week. Really, really thankful for that. Okay. Um, what else? Wife or kids or any of that? No, nah, not none of that. Um Ohio State Buckeyes are undefeated. Yep. Going into the Michigan game. Crazy thankful for that because I bet on them. And the over-under for the, the year was uh, was 10. 
Yep. They've already achieved that victory. So I want a shit ton of money off of that, and I'm super, super grateful for that. Uh, another thing that I'm grateful for is uh, there was one Indian girl in my life. Which kind of... Uh, the real one. Like a real Native American. A real... Wait, you, that's So you're saying that somebody from that's a Native American is a real Indian. Yeah. But they, the reason they got called Indians in the first place is because the dumbass white people thought they were in India. Yeah. So that's not a real Indian. Well, she was to me. <laughs> she was a, a real Cherokee Indian. Okay. I have Cherokee in my family. Uh, do you? you get a, you've got a Jeep Cherokee. I do, so I'm going both ways. <laughs> no, man, this girl was crazy. Just absolutely fucking crazy, man. In a beautiful way. Uh, she is probably either dead now or just divorced like three three times. Like One of those girls you couldn't get away from no matter what you did. You were just like, man, I want to go back in for that. You know, Somebody who would push themselves and be like, you hit me. Like somebody who would grab a, one of the, a potato peeler out of the, the thing and cut her own skin with it and just be like, man, what are we doing here? <laughs> what, what the fuck are we doing here? But then at the end of the night, you know, you end up fucking taking some acid and then reverse 69 on each other standing up. And then it's just like, all right, great. Well, this I've, is going to start again. I've never reversed 69 with a woman before. St- stood up? Anyway. Yeah, so if you, for those of you at home who don't know what that is, a reverse 69 standing up is you're holding the girl up. It's, it, it requires a lot of core strength. Well, the reverse 69 is also where you're eating each other's asses, too. So she's really having to get her head in there. No, no, no. I, I, sorry, I, I meant reverse 69 as far as You're like just talking about a standing 69. Standing 69, yeah. correct, correct. But you're holding her up. Let's like, use the right terminology because our audience is used to excellence. I, I apologize. Um, Again, these flames are getting real close to the dome here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, a standing up 69 requires a lot of core strength. It does. M- muscles in your, in your uh, abdomen. Right. We and, know what a core is. Thank you. No, I know. But butts. And then, it, and then tries, tries are important in something like that. Tries are for the guys. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. Um, curls are for the girls. But uh, when you're in something like that. What's happening over here? And you're up against a wall. Oh, where are we? Ah, uh, look at this. Just a couple of bros taking pictures a of the A little water, family brother. vacay. Alex, shoot that. Get, get over there. Get that family vacay that's going on over there. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. He's, a, hang, he's hanging loose, he's I got guess. A, he's got a man bun. Sick man bun, Nothing bro. says Thanksgiving like a man bun. Hey, look. I don't know why we care, though. Remember the fucking pilgrims and those goddamn hats, their, their haircuts? The, with the buckle on it? Get fucked with that buckle. Yeah. So, I wasn't into that buckle, guys. Come on. Just shit together. I mean, he's, look, he's got, a, he's got a man bun on Thanksgiving. There's nothing wrong with that. In no, life. He's, look, he's feeling himself, I guess. I don't know. I not guess. A, he's trying a little hard. Not a huge it. fan of it, but. <laughs> he looks like he works at REI. <laughs> Anyways, back to your. Standing 69 sword. Standing 69. I'm talking like crashing into walls and shit like that where you're just, it gets violent. You're like, man, we really pushed it to the edge tonight, you know? To me, that just seems unnecessary. It doesn't. It doesn't, though. I mean, you know, everybody's gotten a little aggressive here and there, and it's just like, again, when a girl pulls out a potato peeler and threatens to fucking stab herself with it. it sounds like my ex-girlfriend. I know. That's what I'm saying. Where do you go from there? Home. Yeah. And you leave her at her house. Or you go to that standing 69 position, <laughs> try to figure it out. I don't know. Nothing gets gobbled better than a cock in a standing up 69. <laughs> it is a good angle. Uh, she had blue eyes. So she was Indian. She had these bright blue eyes like the ocean. A lot like this ocean right here. Like the sky. Look at that. I know. Get a picture of the sky there, homeboy. Yeah, there it is. Thanksgiving, Alec. Thanksgiving. Do we take you away from your family? You're so Dan. You're coming over for Thanksgiving tomorrow. No. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. You're invited over for Thanksgiving. We're cooking you food. I appreciate the invite. You know we're Traeger in it, right? We're smoking yeah, the turkey yeah. this I year. I heard about that. Yeah. First time ever. We've never smoked a turkey. I'm real proud of you. Thanks, man. It's a big step. It is. It is. But uh, I'm, all, get- I'm all about that ham life, so you can get fucked with your Traeger. Ham. Are you really? Actually, I love Traeger. Yeah, dude, I love ham. Turkey is boring as shit. But but uh, but a smoker will be great, right? With a turkey? Maybe. Probably, yeah, probably. Right. Yeah. Trying to spice it up. 
Spice it up. We were going. We were thinking turducken. We were gonna get the fucking the uh, the pots. Yeah, with all the shit in it. But uh, last second, it was just like, hey man, that's that might be a little too much, right? I've never tried that before. But the smoker, I think, is where we're definitely definitely going with. I feel like it's mostly foolproof with the smoker, as long as you thaw the bird out right. It's mostly foolproof. You can't fuck it up. Yeah, we got a guy uh, named Cuban Dave who wrote in. Said, hey, man, it's going to require about seven and nine hours of smoking. Sounds about right. That's about how much I do a day. Yeah. The weed. Weed-wise, well, yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, yep. Man, or, these torches are getting real hot right here. Real hot. Yeah, so we're going to smoke that fucking turkey, and then uh, uh, the parents are coming over. We usually have apps, go hard on drinks. Those uh, first games usually on around noon, noon 30. Um, I do, by the way, one of our sponsors, mybookie.com forward slash drinking bros, they're doing, uh, I think it's 250 on the Lions game. Hmm. You, get free, you get a free $250 just for betting on the Lions game. Um, I don't know who they're playing. I don't know, but they always play on. Uh, they do. We'll, them, we'll the cover Cowboys. It on the show tomorrow. Yeah, them, the Cowboys. Um, and uh, the night game is, uh, is there, they've been doing this night game now for a few years. It's Saints versus Falcons. It's fun for me, fun for uh, no one else. Anybody who's a Saints fan, it's fine. but It'll be fun for Saints fans because they're going to beat the bejesus out of Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the smoke's coming in real hot now. <laughs> real hot. Again, I would highly recommend you watch this on YouTube. This is really on fucking fire today. Um, what's the best Thanksgiving you ever had? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> I'm not really. Uh, I want to make this as uncomfortable as I can for you on Thanksgiving because it's about family. Where's your brother at? At his house, I guess. I don't know. How how should I know? I'm sure he likes family shit, so I'm sure he'll be with my mom or dad or both. Are they both alive? So far as I know. Okay. My mom for sure is alive. My dad, right. I don't really give a shit. Gotcha. Uh, but I think so, yeah. All right. I'm sure I would have heard. If he wants to come down, you can have him over to the old Patterson household. Who, my brother? Yeah. I'm sure he'll be with his family there. Yeah. He's divorced, right? Does he have kids? No. Okay. Yeah, it's a big, uh, it's a big thing. I was, uh, I was in a divorced sitch. So, like, my, uh, my dad had custody of me during, like, every other holiday, so I did that. I talked to my barber about this today, mm -hmm. and I honestly think that it's a better situation when your parents or your wife's parents are divorced. Right. Because you can time everything out. Like, hey, we got to go over here now. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, have a, you have an itinerary for the day, and nobody can suck you into staying for too long. Sure. The same way parents use their kids to get out of doing shit. Which is the only reason I'm even thinking about having kids. No, I get it. I get it. So my mm -hmm. wife's parents are divorced. Uh, my wife's dad, Jesse, her dad is a, is a good cook. Mm -hmm. And they're hippies from Ojai. Mm -hmm. So they get high as shit all day. And, like, people are trashed by, like, 11 a.m. there. Uh, relatives and whatnot. It's a really good time. I actually have a really good time up there. Um, when I was growing up and my dad had custody of me, he was a terrible Thanksgiving Day cook. So the meals were always shittier. Just got to go to the Chinese restaurant like a Christmas store. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, we would have a good time. He'd probably smoke some weed, or, or that's what I was assuming he was doing outside. And then uh, the first Christmas movie would usually start that night. So that's what we did at our house. Usually Thanksgiving night they play... Like TNT and TBS and shit like that start playing like 24 hours worth of Christmas movies. No, that's on, that's on Christmas Eve. No, they do it like now they do it throughout the fucking whole season. Mm. Like pretty much every weekend, TBS and TNT especially, any of those Turner networks. They just yeah. play like Home Alone over and over again or some shit like that. Why didn't they ever make an action Thanksgiving movie? <laughs> we should make one. I know where they're like you're just blowing the shit out of turkeys. Like... Die Hard is the best Christmas movie ever made. It is, but Everybody we don't, we don't have a good Thanksgiving movie. No, we should make one. Maybe we should make... 
Maybe if we blew if you blew a turkey away, a live turkey on with a shotgun, on uh, on screen. People have probably seen shit like that. Would they flag you for that? Probably, yeah. But what we should do is sneak up on the turkey, wrap some piano wire around his neck, just rip its whole head off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can you sneak up on a turkey? I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it in post. It's fine. You know they fucking no. I want to. I actually want to see it real. So Jack Mandeville, I, man, I don't. No, it's a rooster. It's a rooster that he does. He used to send me like he still does. Send me these these fucked up videos, where at the end of it, a rooster gets his head blown off, but it's real, <laughs> and it's super violent and awesome. And like every single time, it makes me laugh. Because he'll he'll score it to like family photos and shit, and then. Boom, right? Like, whenever his family's having the happiest memory, a rooster get, gets his fucking head blown off with a shotgun. And it's awesome. I would like to do that in a Thanksgiving movie. I'd like to see a hardcore, aggressive, action Thanksgiving movie. I'm into that. I'm trying to think of ways to make it happen. Is that, we don't, we don't maybe, have one right Maybe, now. like, one year The Purge falls on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, I mean... I. Or, so, or something where, you, where you've got to save it. You've got to save... Save the turkey? No, save Thanksgiving. From whom? For America. For America, but from whom? Fucking Iran or something. <clears throat> Somebody who's trying to take us over. Like, maybe the Indians come back, and they're trying to take our Thanksgiving away. Well, they never left. Well, so they, did, they did and they did Native didn't. Americans still exist. <laughs> They're in this country. Yeah, they did and they didn't. Uh, Some we, of them are related to us. Yes. Well, uh, I, I think the government just gave them, like, casinos and shit. Yeah. That was, that was kind of about it. That was the whole sitch for that, right? Yeah, pretty much. But they still exist here. I haven't seen that many. <clears throat> That's all I'll say. I think that just in the – just to promote togetherness, Native Americans – and whites, or just regular Americans, should come together to fight an outside entity. Like or, maybe, maybe there's a fucking alien race of turkeys, and they found out <laughs> that how we celebrate, like our thanks, mm-hmm. it's an irreligious holiday. There's no religion. It's just everybody right. celebrates this holiday is to murder one of their family members or one of their descendants or whatever. And these giant turkeys come back. To fuck us up, and we have to join together to fight these turkeys off. I think, me personally, the lead should be Danny Trejo playing a, a like an Indian. It's it's super hard to cast Indians in movies. Yeah, because there's not there's not many. There's that guy from uh, from uh, Yellowstone. If mm. you've seen that yet, yeah, but he's it's he's in the everything. same guy. Yeah, because there's like one Indian actor. Yeah. In every single movie. There was a girl who played Pocahontas. Do you remember that one? She was white, right? No. She was actually Native American. Oh, wow. uh, What was her name? Corianca Kilcher, I think was her name. She she had sex with Colin Farrell. There's a super hot Indian girl in Yellowstone, too. Like, super hot. I wonder if it's the same one. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. At any rate, we have to find a villain. Costner. No, he's... Who he's knows an, Indians a, better than Costner? He's an anti-hero. He's not a villain. Eh. It's not the same thing. I think, I think if we called him and we said, hey, man, you could finally pull your dick out in this movie. Oh, yeah, he would do it. <clears throat> you know he's been trying for years. I think if you said, look, man, we're going to shoot a Thanksgiving Day action movie, you get to pull your dick out nine times. To make up for the nine times yeah. he's not been able to do it, yeah. Maybe he was the white man trying <laughs> to help the Indians. And he's got a loincloth, but he's, he's cut it too short. So you just see his dick and balls at the bottom of it. Maybe, maybe there's a secret weapon to defeat the giant turkeys, and the plans for it are tattooed on his dick. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> or I like, I like if he got a, a loincloth from his relatives. Yeah. But they only made an ass portion of it. There's no front? There's no front. So it's like, oh, man, why didn't you turn that around? And he's just like, ah, I couldn't, you know? Yeah. My, everybody's, everybody <laughs> knows you're, once your bottom gets cold, 
you know, that's what's going to really freeze you. But the, he just keeps his dick and balls out the entire movie. You're just super uncomfortable by it. You're like, hey, man, just you want to flip that loincloth around? He's just like, no, I don't. I well, don't we'd definitely never be able to publish that. Eh. Nope. <laughs> there's no way. Because there's a level of erect in a movie mm-hmm. that you're allowed to do. Yeah. And the MPAA will tell you, like, hey, man, that's like uh, for, forgetting Sarah Marshall. Mm-hmm. Um, when Jason Siegel had his dick out, it was one of those takes where they were like, hey, man, you're too. The dick is pointed up to it's I, it's like a 60 degree angle. So anything under 60, you're like, all right, you're good. But it can't be above that. Um, I saw this uh, that the new HBO show Euphoria. I haven't seen it yet. It was a fucking boner in there, though. So hmm. it was a stunt boner. Of course. Yeah. It was the guy from Grey's Anatomy. and uh, Which guy? Eric Dane. I don't know why I ask. I've never seen that show. Uh, McSteamy. So, yeah. No. He's the, got a fucking bone. The only guy it. I know from that show is the dude from Train Spotting, who was also in Rome. Mm. The Scottish guy, red hair. I don't remember his name. A boner double is tough to cast, though, because you, everybody you bring in has got to get it, got to be hard. There's porn actors everywhere in Hollywood. But if you want a boner double, they've got to get hard in the room. Porn guys don't have trouble getting hard in rooms, dude. And also, they don't make shit. Maybe. It's like 300 bucks for a scene. Because here, here's, here's all I'm saying. If I have a boner double, I want to I see the full, I want to see the fucking boner in the room. I want to be a casting agent for boner doubles. For what? For boner doubles. I want to be a casting agent for that. You know what they do? So, like... It was, uh, look, numerous films where I've had nudity in it, obviously. Well, one of them required, uh, this is a terrible story, but it required terrible fake tits. So I told the casting directors, I said, hey, I need a terrible actress with terrible fake tits. How do we go about this without... Without hurting someone's feelings. Yeah, and he he was like, look, man, you can actually ask for that and request it, but he goes... If I were you, would have one of your female producers in the room, and I was just like, "All right," yeah. and I was like, "What? What do you? What do? You, what are we calling this?" And they were like, "Ah, eh, it's like a pop the hood sesh." And I was like, "Pop the hood sesh?" Yeah, pop the hood, like lift up yeah, the yeah. top. Let's see, let's see the goods, right? I don't know if you can get away with this today. To be honest with you, this was in 2010. I don't know. There's still a lot of like nude body double stuff going on. They have to be casting these people somehow. Yeah. So, anyways. I'm going to be real. This was the funnest day of casting of all time. There was about 12 girls that came in and uh, <laughs> lifted all up their shit, you know? And I was just like, wow, this is rad. But I did. I, I, took, I took her advice and I said, hey, um, I'll fucking, I'll have a, I mean, I took the casting director's advice. I said, hey, I'll, I'll have a girl in here and, um, and we'll figure this out. Um, and they felt more comfortable and whatever. And then we, I was surprised that we had full conversations with them. Topless. Some people just feel comfortable naked. Topless. I don't think they care. Yeah. I don't either. The weirdest one, though, was there was like a, a hot like wife slash mom. And she was like a real genuine actor. It was just the wrong, yeah. wrong, wrong place, wrong time. But like I got to... Get to see those titties, yeah. I did, man. And uh, I felt bad about that. Well, look. Can I say this out there, though? If you're, if you're a mom out there, a single mom, or a, or a wife and a mom, and you think, yeah, maybe I don't got it, she had the best tits out of anybody in there that day. Just couldn't cast her. I needed a, a horrific boob job. Yeah. Train wreck. Yes. Um, and I found that. So kind of kind of proud of myself, actually, but um, but it's also L.A., so there's a lot of back alley. You can find anything in L.A. Van. Yeah. Hey, man, let's use a let's use a pear knife and slide these things in there for 2K, you know? Yeah. Instead of six. Pairing knife. Yeah. Not a pear knife. Yeah. I, I think they might uh, nope. individual knives it's for pears as well. P-A-I-R-I-N-G. Pairing. Nah. They make uh, knives for pears as well. Uh, they also make beds for special people. 
ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is uh, where they're making the beds of the future. Man, Alec, look at, get a shot of that sky. We call this the pink moment here in Plymouth Rock. Gorgeous, isn't it? It's very Gorge. pretty. Uh, man, if you were on a ghost bed right now, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros with a lady. There is one lady in particular that I'm hanging out with now, and she loves sunsets. That's her thing. Really? Yeah. That's her thing is sunsets? Yeah. She loves it more than anything. I should probably dump her. <laughs> um, <laughs> or get her a ghost bed. <laughs> pop her out on the beach. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get yourself a mattress. They got a 36-month page to go program. Nobody's offering that in this entire world. If you're military or first responder, well, you can take an extra 15% off forever. Not an extra 15%, just 15% of everything in the store. Uh, for your the Black Friday deals are going on right now. <laughs> the smoke, Alec. The smoke from the tiki torches. Black is Friday, going off. Cyber Monday, it's all going down. It's all going down. This weekend. S Cyber Monday, Black Friday. Honky Tuesday, that's a new one. That's for white people who don't work on Tuesdays. Are you familiar with Honky Tuesday, Alec? No. He's saying yes. He's saying he is. Because mm. he is a honky. He's wearing shorts and a fucking tie-dyed sweatshirt. Shake the camera head for Honky Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. You and, and your family just... And black socks and fucking tennis shoes. You and your family just go put pink <laughs> polos on, go, go shopping on Honky Tuesday with... Uh, <laughs> What are those? Uh, what are those wooden shoes you guys wear? They look like wood. Bass, Dock Siders, on Honky Tuesdays. That's a, it's a big white holiday tradition. Honky Tuesdays. It's right after Cyber Monday, where it's just like ah, eh. Sperry's. Sperry's. You don't. Whoa. Let me stop you right there, because he's got some upstairs right now. And if when I first moved here. To Plymouth Rock yeah. and went up into his beach house, which again is at Plymouth Rock. He showed me these Sperry shoes. He was like, this is the whitest thing I own. I'm like, oh, God, that's disgusting. I'll tell you why. They were limited edition, their jaws, and uh, <laughs> felt like I needed them. I felt like I needed them. You know what day I got them on? Honky Tuesday, was brother. Was it really? Which year? Honky Tuesday. I don't know. They're four or five years old. I only have one pair of Sperry's. Um, and even then, I'm not, I, it might be Vans. I don't even know what they are. No, they're Sperry. I looked. Either way. Just so I can make fun of you for it later. It's from the Jaws franchise. Uh, what, 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 go to fucking ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. We got ExpressVPN today? Yeah. ExpressVPN.com forward slash drinking bros. Protect your digital butthole. You know what the pilgrims weren't worried about? Digital shit. No, they the were Indians. too busy worried that the buckle on their hat was going to come off. Yeah. You don't want your hat to fall down like that. No. But you can't buckle up your security. It's the worst fucking segue I've ever given. <laughs> you can't buckle up on security. Go to expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros today and uh, protect your yourself. They're trying to rob you out there. Trying to get your passwords. Trying to steal shit off your phones, your tablets, your uh, desktops. You name it. Go to expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros today. And uh, you can beat everything in the firewall, by the way. Everything. Seven bucks a month with expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. You know what you can get? You can get three free months off. That's only uh, 60 bucks a year, I think. Uh, last but not least, who do we got there? Is that stance.com? We got some Wu Tang Clan socks right here. Just reminding you to protect your neck and diversify your bonds. Yeah. Stance.com. Yeah forward slash drink it bros they've got all kinds of weird ass socks they've got sports teams they've got regular socks they've got all kinds of other apparel uh and it's a it's a bogo it's a buy one get one free so go to drink it bro or uh stance.com forward slash drink it bros buy whatever you want get a pair of socks for free bogo they got all kinds of shit they got mlb nba nfl you name it uh they've got WNBA. they well nope yep nope I hope not. <laughs> they've got some uh, Lisa they've got, Leslie socks. They've got all of Disney and Marvel and shit. What else? They've got they've got a bunch of stuff that I don't even remember. I got a tiny mustache. Who does? Who's got the WNBA socks that you love? 
No one loves WNBA socks. A lot of people, dude. No. Sue Bird. The magic is Sue Bird, Lisa Leslie. <laughs> Man, remember Lisa the years Leslie they won? hasn't played for ten years. Remember dude. the glory days, brother? <laughs> <laughs> no one. Uh, what is it? Stance.com forward slash Shrinker Bros. Yeah, you can bogo it. You love their socks. You wear their, th- them shits every day. Yeah, I was wearing Deadpool socks at the uh, Ohio State game. Goddamn right you were. Yep. Goddamn right you were. You ever uh, made love to a lady on a beach? No. It's two places I don't like. It's too much sand. Yeah. And uh, I still don't like fucking in a jacuzzi. I've I've had sex in a jacuzzi. Yes. It was okay. I don't enjoy it. It's too much water. Water is not a lubricant. No, it's not. So you can let your imagination run wild there. It just doesn't always work out. Uh, and also, you don't want to get treated water up your butthole. No. And... A lot of people don't know this about me, but when I have sex, my butthole opens up. Is that real? You, you're, you're a gaper when you uh, have sex, huh? Yeah, even, I mean, I'm delivering, obviously, but still, my butthole gapes. I don't know why. How far would you say that gapes open? Two inches? Three inches? Like, how far am I dilated? Yeah. Ten centimeters, maybe? I don't know. What's your, <laughs> <laughs> What's your butthole dilation, dude, on something like that? What would you say? I'd, I don't know, just enough for the, for it to be comfortable, you know? You remember the first finger up, up the ass you got from a lady? I've never had a girl put her finger up my butt. You're joking me. Not once. I don't feel like I know you on Thanksgiving. I, look, look. That's something you should be try- thankful for. I was trying to tell this girl, like, hey, what you said just now made me smile. And she's looking at my face. She goes, you did not smile. I'm like, I felt like I did. So yeah. from now on, I'm just going to tell you, and you can figure it out on your own. Uh, I bet you your butthole smiles, though. Oh, it does. It winks, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a smile and a wink. <laughs> <laughs> you tell a girl that? Man, I'm so happy you made me smile. Really? Because there's nothing going on in your face. Wrong smile. Yeah, I smile with my butthole. So. I smile with my butthole. Maybe that's been my problem this whole time. Never had a finger in the ass, huh? Not once. That's, sh- that's a shocker. Nailed it. Nailed it. Boom. Boom. People say two in the pink, one in the stink. Yeah. I say five in the stink. Yeah, you go you go a whole fist in the stink. This is America, brother. Yeah. Really? We put stuff in our asses here. You ever fist a girl? No. Really? No. I'm learning a lot about you today on Thanksgiving. I wouldn't, like if I, if I was able to, yeah. I'd probably just not I would probably just leave. Okay. Yeah, I remember the first uh, finger in my asshole. It was it was shocking, at first. Um, you don't go past the the first knuckle. It's you're not really gay. You're just kind of figuring things out in there, and you're like, eh, all right. Because you don't want to be a, a sex coward. No, of course not. Like yeah. I've never stopped anybody. No one's ever tried, and that's why I brought up the smiling thing because I think because of how angry I look all the time. Yeah, people are afraid to try shit with me. But I personally don't think there's anything. That a woman can do to a man that's gay. That's not what gay is. Like, honestly, not that I'm into this, but if a woman put on a strap on and fucking railed you out, that's not gay. She would is you, a woman. Would you let her do that? Fuck no. But, because <laughs> I just don't want giant things in my butthole. But, yeah. that's still not gay. There's nothing that a straight woman can do to a straight man that's gay. That's not how gay works. No, and, and look, that'll take us back to the first episode. Our very first episode was an episode called Pegging Explained, right? Yeah. And uh, that, that was the story of, of I dated somebody who, who allegedly dated Mike Piazza and then he got pegged. I don't know, man. When you, if you take a full dildo to your asshole, that's a lot, dude. That's a lot for me to, to question whether or not you are gay in this world. Well, the male G-spot is the prostate. I understand that, but you can reach that with a finger. I don't think you need a whole dildo for something like that. Probably not. No. Not at all. I haven't done a whole lot of research. I noticed the kids have gone inside on uh, Plymouth Rock here. Um, yep. That Again, is, that's Plymouth Rock right there. Yeah, Plymouth Rock. <laughs> Everybody's all gone from this convo. It's weird. <laughs> Once you start talking about fingers and dildos and, and man's assholes. People take their children inside. People get real squeamish. Real squeamish. I know I would. I'm a father as well, and I would, I would definitely pull my kids inside if I heard two grown men on a beach 
with uh, tiki torches that are very reminiscent of Charlottesville. Um, just yep. talking about getting butt blasted. We do have a certain look about us. We're the nicest guys ever. Yeah. But I know what I look like. That's why I try to be like nice to people in public. Because I know that I look like somebody that might commit a hate crime. <laughs> but I'm not going to, guy. No. I'm no, good. No. I'm not going to commit a hate crime. I promise you. No. Maybe a love crime, but not a hate crime. Eh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I said it and it's out there now. So A fucking love crime. Are you really not coming over for Thanksgiving? No. Okay. No. You like to, That's your alone time, huh, Thanksgiving? Yeah. Christmas, though. Maybe. Okay. Maybe Christmas. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we got a lot of messages about the Christmas Abbott episode. Yeah. Um, she's always great. She's great. I was not expecting her to talk about a prolapsed anus, though. No. I, usually when you go into a conversation with, like, a porn chick... You think maybe it'll go to the butthole at some point? Yeah. Uh, but not with Christmas Abbott. No, not at all. Who is famous for something other than her butthole. Yeah. But uh, she was very candid about her pregnancy. I thought I actually thought it was a really interesting interview. She's uh, rad, man. She's she's one of those she's one of those badass chicks that like other other women are jealous of where she's just like, hey man, let's not let's not stare at Christmas too long. Yeah. Cause that's you're <laughs> You're gazing at her a little too hard there. You know what I'm saying? She's got her own shit together. She's a boss-ass bitch. She's got a fucking gun tattooed on the side of her hip. So, Does she? Oh, yeah. yeah. She's going to pull that thing on somebody. Well, she ha- she obviously has. And uh, <laughs> got a lot of feedback from her of like, yo, who dates that girl? She never told us, by the way. No, she's... She was really I don't know who she dates. She was really cagey about it, but hopefully it works out for her. She's a cool chick. I hope she She's rad, but we 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 never met the dude. No. So I can't answer that question. Everybody's hitting me up of like, hey man, who does she date? And I'm like, fuck man, I don't know. Hopefully she ends up with somebody that's relatively normal, I guess. Yeah, we'll see. Or at least normal for her. I don't know what that would be. Not J- not Jared. No. No, definitely not Jared. Like no. that that'll never happen. She is uh she's out of his league. I think. Yeah, but that's never been a problem for him. What's that? That's never really been a problem for him. Not that. I just, man, I think she's over the bullshit of like, hey, man. Yeah. I don't want to eat sandwiches out of a fucking gas station, you know? <laughs> I mean, he's, he's the only person on earth that does want that. I know. That's what I'm saying. But I think she's out of that stage of her life where it's just like, eh, I'm not going to fucking do that, that bullshit anymore with you guys. I'm not going to get in a car and ride from San Antonio to Vegas. I honestly wouldn't mind get fucked up. a gas station sandwich right now. I'm hungry. Well, it is Thanksgiving. Yeah. What are you going to have then? If you're not coming over, what are you, what are you having? What are you doing for Thanksgiving? Gas station food, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you going to try to Postmates something in? I have done that before. On uh, Thanksgiving? Oh, yeah. Last year, I think. What do, they do? What do they do? They show up to your house and hand you your food and say you're welcome. No shit. So there's people working. Yeah. I didn't know if there's anybody fucking working. What did I do last Thanksgiving? It was right, well, were we somewhere before that? Where were we last year? Uh, I, was, I was here. I remember I, I was at my house. Yeah, but you were in. Jesse's family was out here. You then. were in uh, San Antonio right before that, right? Right before that, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I probably just sat at my house. I don't. I don't do stuff. One thing, the only Thanksgiving that I didn't spend with family, I was shooting a movie. It was a terrible movie, but it was a blast of a shoot, and it went over. And uh, it was a movie called House of the Dead 2. It was fucking terrible. Um, terrible movie. I paid a lot of money, but uh, it was really fucking fun, and it got pushed over onto Thanksgiving Day. Mm. So I had to shoot until like 7 in the morning on Thanksgiving Day. But it was a blast. You know what I did? I was playing a fraternity guy. You're welcome. It's a big stretch for me yeah. to really research on that. <clears throat> um, and my, that entire night was, it was me and the guy who played uh, Juice from uh, Sons of Anarchy. Oh, yeah. I like that guy. Theo Rossi's is his yeah. name. Yeah. Um, rad dude. All we, we, we were invading a sorority house during a wet t-shirt contest scene spraying their tits down with water out of these things over and over and over again 
And that was the first time I didn't like get to fly home or see my family for Thanksgiving. And I remember looking at him and I go, if I got to do this every year for the rest of my life, I would never go home for Thanksgiving. Right. Um, so after that, we had to go out with all of the, 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 the girls we sprayed down and we had a Thanksgiving brunch with them. <laughs> It was the great. It was one of the greatest Thanksgivings of all time, and and to Lionsgate Studio, I want to say thank you for that. Do gift. they still exist? Yes, they do. I want to say thank you for that unbelievable gift, because that was one of the greatest Thanksgivings of all time. And we just had we had brunch with all of these wet, topless. They were still wet at the time. I mean, they dried off as much as they could, but their hair was wet and shit. So Wait, like, what, at what time of day was this goddamn wet t-shirt contest? So it went, we started shooting at night. I want to say the shoot started at, like, it's this crazy Australian director. I couldn't fucking understand a word he said. Um, we started around 9 and ended about 7 in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody kind of, we just kind of threw on whatever clothes we had. And then, um, and then we just went to some weird L.A. brunch. And the weird thing about L.A. is... There isn't like a f- sense of family there, so like right. everything was open. You're like, ah, well, fuck it. So it was I think it was me, Theo, and like these seven young, you know, college age fucking girls who we, we who were brawless and and you know all of the scenes, and yep. uh, we all had Thanksgiving brunch together. And it was a lovely day, Dan. <laughs> We're getting fucked up on uh, the beaches of Plymouth Rock here. I probably said way too much this episode about about that. Yeah. Did I tell you I was thankful for the women of Arizona State? You said that, yeah. I did. Okay. Is that just making sure? Just make sure you don't. You never know if you are, or you aren't. You know. <sighs> what on Plymouth Rock? Uh, no. If, if, if you're if you're if you're giving thanks to all the right people. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I didn't give any thanks. So. <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, by the way, I, I wanted to, to remind you about your Bill Cosby thing. You were my, asking about Cosby a few episodes ago. My Bill Cosby thing? Yeah. About, well, about Bill Cosby. What, what was going on in his life? What was I asking about? Uh, if he was happy, if he was getting out, if we could dress like him for a Halloween. That part I'm curious about. Might have been about. off air, actually. I'm yeah. fucked up. Maybe some of the shit we shouldn't be talking about on air. Whatever, man. Well. I am. I do want to dress like him for Halloween. Well, here, here's here's a fun fact. He did an interview this morning. He did. He did from jail. From jail. Okay. Not remorseful at all. He said, uh, "Look, man, you weren't in the room. You didn't know what happened. You don't know what happened with these women." They were like, "What are you going to do when you're up for parole?" And he goes, "I'm gonna tell him this. Bold move. Out of fucking Cosby. How old is he? He's." Shit, seventy something, eighty something. How many years did he get? Fucking twenty-two or eighteen oh, or something he's, like that. He's gonna die in there. Yeah, he's gonna die in there. Honestly, but I guess I guess in eight or nine months they said he would have had a parole me- or he is gonna have a parole yeah. meeting, and they're gonna discuss it. But uh, you know, I don't know. Honestly, if you're in your late seventies, jail's probably not that bad. That's what he said. So here's what he said. He goes, man, I'm in a penthouse in here, and I'm treated like a king. And he goes, so fuck it. I, he goes, I miss my wife, and that's about it. But other than that, I get to mentor young African-American men and help them out in their lives. And it's like, What is it that he's teaching them exactly? <laughs> how to rape people and wear sweaters? Like, everybody already knows how to do that, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mentor. Get fucked, Bill Cosby. So if you were wondering if he was getting out anytime soon, the answer is... No, it's going to be a hard no. It's going to be a negativo, my man. He's, he's not. That's a person I'm not uh, thankful for, by the way. No, fuck it. You know what we should do? We should go find Theo Huxtable and write a new series where it's, it's Bill Cosby's medical practice, but it's super fucking dark. Like he plays Bill Cosby in the show, <laughs> but the medical practice is fucked. It's like Dexter style. He's fucking murdering and raping people and shit. But never call it that. Just dress him the same, but don't don't refer to him uh, exactly. But or, have, 
But have Theo playing him? Or a, or a guy, a white guy who was named Bill Cosby before Bill Cosby was famous. Yeah. And then he mm-hmm. becomes a serial rapist because of all of the jokes and how many people have made fun of him. Because we all know those people. Famous like, names. Like Michael then, Bolton from Office Space? Yes. I, there, was, there was a white Michael Jordan that I grew up with. And all I kept thinking was, man, you're fucked. Mm-hmm. You were fucked, hombre. He was terrible at basketball. You know? It's a pretty recognizable name. Yeah, it is. It sucks. It was, a whole, it was a whole series I, I saw on this on, in People Magazine about people's lives that were ruined because they had a famous celebrity name. Yeah. And they didn't want to change it. Well, you don't see anybody walking around named Hitler. No. That name's just gone now. Gone. But there was a white Jim Carrey. It was like a dentist, and he was like. There's got to be a lot of Jim Carreys out there. He was okay with it. That's a pretty common name. Uh, but then there was others who tried to change it, like Michael, Michael B. Jordan. He put the B in there. That's, yeah, but he, he had to do that for SAG, though, probably, right? I don't know, but either way. Because Michael yeah, Jordan yeah, would have yeah, had yeah, to yeah, register yeah. for SAG for Space Jam back in the Space day. Space Jam, yeah. But uh, either way, to hang on to that name is pretty – that's bold. I would have changed it. Because a lot of people don't know this. My name was Cher as a kid. Yeah. You know, I changed Cher it to Ross Bono. Patterson. Cher – Bono. <laughs> yeah. And then just share for a while, you know? Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. Uh, and you know what I'm thankful for, though, is the Drinking Bros. Yeah. Um, it was a weird show on the <laughs> beaches here of Plymouth Rock. Speaking of the Drinking Bros, we have some news. So you've heard us talking recently about uh, Sergeant First Class Richard Stayskull, uh, who is the gentleman we had on the show Monday last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, or is it Monday of this week? I forget. Was it just the other day? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was Monday of this week. So we found out from his attorney, Natalie Kwam, that uh, we won. Uh, the Richard Stayskull Government Accountability Act is going to be included in the National Defense Authorization Act of 2020 now. Is that real? Yes. Fucking A, man. So it's a lot of people have been working on this a lot of people in the veteran community natalie kwam his attorney richard himself his family and uh you know this fight's been going on for about a year now and i gotta tell you i'm really proud of the way drinker bro has handled this uh everybody called man and shut down lindsey graham's fucking god damn that i mean it was shut down his his answering machine or whatever his phone what? number is still off i think yeah now. um <clears throat> This is probably the most, out of all the stuff that's happened with Drinker Bros, whether it be the movie, Black Rifle Coffee, the books, all this shit, this is probably the most important thing that's ever happened out of this group. And it's not because of us, it's because of you guys. And that's, like, legit something that we're super thankful for. Um, Back in the day, JFK said that, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but he, he said we'll support any friend and oppose any foe to ensure the success of liberty. And I'm telling you now that this show, Ross, Jared, and myself, will fucking fight anybody. We don't care if you're a politician, a rich, famous celebrity. We don't give a fuck who you are. If you fuck with one of our people, we will burn you to the ground to get justice. So remember that. Uh, don't ever forget it. And if you're one of those drinking bros out there that took part in this, you should be proud of yourself. You're helping a guy that's in a very bad situation get some fucking justice in his life. It's a big deal to do that. Yeah, it's amazing, man. I, I, you know, I, I knew it was close, or they, and they might have been talking about it, but shit, what did you just talk to them? I just heard about this yesterday. It's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, because a couple of these we we shoot in advance, so yeah, we don't know. It depends on the guests and when they can get there and everything. Obviously, Richard <laughs> was a special situation. Um, well, shit, we shot that almost two weeks ago now. Yeah. God damn it. That's amazing. Yeah. Honestly, we just want to say thank you to the drinking bros. Yep. You guys have literally changed the course of, of American history with that. Like, no yeah. shit. This has been, the Ferris Doctrine has been the law for, what, 60 1950s, years? 1950s, yeah. Yeah, it's been 60 plus years now. And because of you guys and uh, all the other, all the rest of the people that were involved in this, this man's going to get some fucking justice and maybe some peace as well. So we really appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers. And I, for real, we, we are unbelievably thankful for you. Um, we are grateful that you listen, grateful that we have a show. 
and uh, grateful that you fight for people and champion these types of causes. So on this weird Thanksgiving Day episode that we've had, uh, we will end it on a serious note and say we are extremely thankful for you. Uh, enjoy your families. Enjoy your friends or whatever you're doing for Thanksgiving. Dan, I want you to enjoy your Postmates. I will. You're really not coming over? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Subscribe on YouTube. You, you can see this fuckery. Um, it looks beautiful, but I don't know. I'm not buying the yeah, camera, we'll so we'll find out. Uh, good night, everyone. <laughs>